Hello there guys and welcome, it is Niran here and today it is time for episode number 42 of our West Ham United FIFA 15 career mode here today on Xbox 360 and in today's episode we return to three games per episode after an incredible video last time in terms of results. We obviously we, we played Newcastle last and we beat them 3-2 in a pretty crazy match actually, that's pretty much the reason why we ended up with only two matches last episode. But of course, the first game of that episode, we did the unthinkable. We beat Chelsea 3-1 in the Capital One Cup final to lift our first silverware of this career mode. And in today's episode, we'll be taking steps towards winning more. We play CSK Moscow twice in the Europa League and Chelsea in the Barclays Premier League. But before this episode gets underway, if we could smash 50 likes on this episode, that would be awesome. So 50 likes and uh, another episode will be out soon. But going back to that Chelsea game, it's going to be a titanic clash because we now find ourselves in a bit of a, bit of a title battle. Meantime, we're stepping out onto the pitch here at Uxham Park to face CSKA Moscow. Never played them on FIFA, I don't believe, before. I've played them in, uh, I've played Sparta at Moscow on Aston Villa career mode. Don't believe I've played CSKA Moscow. Here you can see the lineup though in the background. 4-2-3-1 with Gronier as the attacking mid, Draxler and Schoener as wingers, Delph and Koyate as defensive mids, and Abubakar up front. Of course, Delph back from injury now, and Willem's coming back into the side to replace Cresswell. But as you can see, their first chance of the game going to us, and it was Gronier there one-on-one -on -one with Akin Fayev. But now Roman Aramenko with a fantastic first time ball over the top for Rasmus Elm and thankfully the Swede bullets it over the bar because that was a pretty decent chance for CSK Moscow. As you can see though, the man who got the first chance in the game outright, Clement Gronier, is injured and he's having to come off for Widgewedge, uh, our attacking midfielder from Holland. But as you can see, Widgewedge stepping straight into the game here in the 59th minute, skipping past the challenge and he's running now at Berezutsky. He's trying to get some space here and he might have done into the area. He takes the strike on his left foot and it loops over the goalkeeper. I can fire with a cruel deflection, I think off one of the Berezutsky brothers into the top corner. And somehow we take the lead. We probably, on the balance of play, just about deserve it. As as you can see though, Draxler now going forward. He's cut past Mario Fernandez, the Brazilian right back, and it's a good save again from Russia uh, from the Russian goalkeeper Akin Fayev in CSK Moscow's goal. As you can see, Koyate now set forward. It's to the back post, and surely that's a penalty. A Bubakar getting just clotheslined at the back post by I think it was Rasmus Elm. And we've not got a penalty somehow. Now it's Alan Zhagoyev, the man who's really stepped up in the World Cup a few years ago, but hasn't really done much since. Zoran Tosic, though, meantime, putting it over the top for Ahmed Musa, one of our transfer targets last summer. And he has scored the classic sucker punch with just 30 minutes to go. CSK Moscow now have an away goal after we should have had a penalty. Now Zoran Tosic getting it forward for Zhagoyev. He's taken down, but Umtiti got the ball. And TT got the ball. The referee's given a penalty. We should have had our own penalty. And CSK Moscow have been given a ridiculous one. It's hit the bar, though, from Natko. And the rebound dribbles in from Tosic. And this is just not our day. Scuffe diving over the ball. We should have had a penalty. And then CSK Moscow get a dodgy penalty of their own. And the game ends 2-1. They get two away goals. And it's a disastrous start to this episode. Because already we're massively on the back foot now. Going into the second leg of this Europa League tie. As you can see there are the ratings in the background. A massive shame after Widge Wedge or Vinaldum there scoring our opening goal. But just shocking refereeing decisions really, really costing us there. As you can see, Clement Grogne is out for eight days with a bruised elbow. I'm sorry, I would just slap him in the face and tell him to get on with it. Because if you're out of a Chelsea game, a crucial game in our entire season, with a bruised elbow, you need a slap, to be honest with you. Nevertheless, this is a video game. Thus, I cannot slap him. So he, we are without Grogne for this game and unfortunately due to that CSK Moscow game being on a Thursday we're massively fatigued the whole starting 11 so Ravel Morrison will have to come into the side Cresswell I think is back in again to replace Willems we've got a lot of fairly tired players starting this game Draxler's out because he was absolutely gone uh, stamina wise so there you can see the uh, the squad in the background Cresswell and Reckitt coming into the side there at the back. Widge Wedge having to start on the left-hand side because Draxler was completely gone. And Ravel Morrison coming into the side as an attacking mid uh, for Grogne. But as you can see, Eden Hazard getting the first chance of the game again, much like in the Capital One Cup final. This time he doesn't score from the free kick. He puts it just over the bar. But lovely chop inside from Widge Wedge and forcing a fantastic save from Petr Cech there after some fantastic skill, almost scoring a brilliant goal. Cech Koyate though giving the ball to Fabian Davis. Going to try and work some space. He finds Abubakar making the run. And it's a fantastic first-time finish. And that is 1-0. We are 
beating Chelsea again. It's just taken 11 minutes and Vincent Abubakar has now scored, I think, seven goals in eight games since signing here for West Ham. He's having a fantastic start to his West Ham career. Now spreading it out wide is the Cameroonian. Out towards Van Aldem, who cuts inside again and again is denied by Petr Cech in goal. This time going for the near post strike. Now Vincent Abubakar set through again. Out strengthening Nathan Ake at the back and he puts it in again and it's 2-0 after 36 minutes. Fantastic play from Vincent Abubakar. And look at that strength there, getting away from the Dutchman Nathan Ake at the back. He's got a lot to learn maybe about defending. He'll be great in the future, but he's been outstrength there massively by Abubakar. And at half time, it is 2-0. A very good performance so far. We were dominating this game. It took until the 65th minute for Chelsea to get another chance. And Thorg and Hazard there with the header, somehow out jumping Winston Reid. But still, thankfully, that goes just over the bar. Meanwhile, Ravel Morrison here on a fantastic run, getting away from one defender. Now going past Nathan Ake, sliding in to try and apply the finish. But it's a good save from Czech. And the follow-up from, uh, from Diafra Sacco coming off the bench is straight into the grateful arms of Czech. Morrison going forward again and forcing a fairly easy save this time out of Pelicek. It falls for, uh, for Alan Traore who goes for a long shot on his right foot. Never going to reach the goal and always going to go wide but it's blocked anyway. Going forward again and we are having a fantastic performance. Vinaldum again testing Czech. Somehow Widgewedge has not scored in this game. Chelsea though finally going forward in the final minutes of the game. Atsuto Achida clearing it away but uh, Cresswell does not do the same. He, uh, he makes a bit of a hash of it in the end. It's fallen to Diego Costa but it's a good block. Good defending from Karen Rekic. Scuffe is now to throw it out towards Vinaldum, and that is the end of a fantastic performance. A brilliant bounce back after that that loss against CSKA Moscow, and we have got a huge win. Now we are now second in the league with that win, joint on points with Chelsea. Fantastic stuff. Only second on goal difference. That is mad. Fantastic ratings for Fabian Delph, Vincent Abubakar, and Jorginho Vinaldum with a very, very solid defensive performance as well. In the meantime, you can see a little bit of a squad report there in the background. I haven't shown you this for a while, I don't think. So in the background, you'll just be seeing the amount of attributes or stats that these players have gone up since joining or since the start of the season. There's quite, there's, there's still some surprising ones in here, even right now. Lasse Schoen having gone up 2 to 79 at the age he's at does surprise me a little bit. Vinaldum up 2. Zarate going down 1 already. He's only 28. Eric Palmer Brown showing some very good progress. He's up 3 to 68. Uh, Willems and Moncur at 1. Morrison also at 1. He's not really started too many times this season, but he's up one stat nonetheless. Brill Donald Embolo, of course, in on loan from Basel. He's up 2 to 71. Delph up 3 as well to 78, despite being 26 years of age. And then after this, you can just see the loanies. Lee up 2. Uh, there. Chambers up 2. Burke up 3. McCallum up 2. And Janai Gordon up 3 as well to 57. But now it is time to get into the final game of this episode, the third and final game of the episode. And again, we are, of course, playing CSK Moscow, this time in the away fixture of this two-legged tie in the Europa League. It's, so it's, it's, it's raining. It's raining a lot. For some reason, CSK Moscow's home stadium is Ivy Lane. Not entirely sure why. Nevertheless, let's get into the starting 11. Scuffe in goal. Uchida, Reed, Rekic again starting because he's been in fantastic form recently. Been liking that partnership between himself and Reed. Delph and Koyate is defensive mids again with Schoener and Draxler as wingers. Widge Wedge as an attacking mid and a Bubakar up front. We need to get two goals in this game straight up. Whatever happens. Unless CSK Moscow, of course, score two as well. We should have been given an opportunity to get that first goal there as Vinaldum was completely shoved off the ball. But yet again, we don't get a penalty. And again, it's a pretty poor refereeing decision. Vinaldum going forward again just two minutes later, but denied this time by Akin Fayev. Into the box though from, uh, from Ahmed Musa. Thankfully, Zoran Tosic, one of the smaller players in CSK Moscow's uh, squad. He gets on the end of it and thankfully heads it over the bar. Abubakar now going forward again. He skips past the challenge of Berezutsky, but it's a fantastic save there from Akin Fayev and it goes over the bar. It's not looking as if it's going to be our day, but on the 65th minute there, that is Roman Aramenko going in from behind. It's a red card. It's just, it's obviously a stonewall red card on this game. In real life, it's not, so I'm going to I'm gonna put that down to a pretty bad decision as well. Unlucky to CSK Moscow because it shouldn't have been a red card, but now Mark Gonzalez setting through Rasmus Elm. It's a fantastic challenge from Rekic. He's got the ball. He's got the ball, and the referee, well, he's trigger happy now. He's given one red card. He wants to be the star of the show, and he's given Rekic a red card as well. Completely undeserved, as you can see from the replay. The ball goes in the complete opposite direction. Clearly, the Dutchman gets the ball from the resulting uh, free kick. Thankfully, Scuffe comes out on top there uh, from Rasmus Elm's free kick. And 
we're just getting done over. We're just getting completely done over by refereeing decisions. As you can see, Alan Traore, they're trying to go forward and trying to produce a bit of a left-footed rocket there. He can't. Abubakar going for a finesse shot from outside the area, but it's well saved from Akin Fayyab, who was probably the man of the match. As you can see, though, the game ends nil-nil, and we are unfortunately out of the Europa League. I can only take it as a positive, because clearly we were just not destined to win that cup. Four major decisions going against us across two ties. Let's not forget Sven Ulreich as well in that Stuttgart game in the round of 32 in the second leg where we could have won at least 8-1 and Sven Ulreich just turned into Superman. We clearly were not destined to win that trophy but it does mean now in terms of positives we can just solely concentrate on the Barclays Premier League. As you can see there is the BPL table in the background. Uh, United can actually go top because they have a game in hand and they're only two points behind ourselves and Chelsea joint at the top of the table with City there in third. But what a season we are having. The top four teams keep stumbling over each other and we've just managed to scythe our way up into second place, beating the big, uh, the big teams. We've beaten Chelsea again. We've done the double over, over Chelsea. F forget that. We've done the triple over Chelsea, of course, including that Capital One Cup final win. And yeah, we're up into second in the league. If you did enjoy that episode, though, feel free to smash the like button. 50 likes yet again would be absolutely awesome. Subscribe if you are new around here as well for FIFA 15 and F1 2015 content. It's been a pleasure, though, ranting at you guys today. Have a good day. Enjoy yourselves. And goodbye.